I'm going to talk to you about how to get your ex to come to you. And first, I need to talk to you about the reality of the situation. So the first point is, this is your reality. The movies you saw growing up and even the movies today, TV shows, all of that give you a false reality, a false sense of what's really going on when you're in a relationship and when someone wants to break up with you. And if you look in the movies, you'll see that a lot of times when there's a breakup, that there's this grandiose romantic gesture where the person who's been dumped goes after the other person. They pursue them. They're trying to show them how much they love them and all these things. And we see it happen in movies. And so our brain, because we tend to not know the difference between what's real and what's fake. That's why when you watch a movie about a shark attacking a ship, you're scared. You feel the nervousness, the anxiety, the fear as though it's actually happening to you. That's why when you see something on a TV screen and it goes toward you, you jump like it's actually coming physically towards you in real life because your brain can't tell the difference between what's real and what's fake when it sees it on a screen. And so a lot of people have grown up with the idea that this works because it works in movies. We see this person raise a boombox up over their head and play a romantic song and the girl comes back down, kisses him, and they get back together. That's clearly how you do it. I've seen it work. That's what it feels like. And so when you hear somebody like me say, don't do anything, leave them alone, sounds like, well, then I'm not even trying to get them back. That's what it sounds like, but that's not true. The reality of the situation is most likely, except in rare circumstances, they already know that you love them. They already know that you want to be with them. They already know that you're willing to do grand amazing things to get back together with them. That's not the issue. The issue most of the time, and I'm not saying 100% of the time, but probably 90 to 95% of the time is that their attraction, their love is the issue. How do they feel about you? It's not so much how you feel about them. It's how they feel about you because most of us have been in situations where another person wanted to be with us. Another person was in love with us and was attracted to us, but we didn't reciprocate. Just knowing that they cared about us was not enough to make us want to be with them because we have to be attracted to them physically, emotionally, intellectually. And if we are not, how they feel about us is irrelevant. You are in that situation now. It's not about what you want or how badly you want it. It's about what your ex wants. And right now they don't want the relationship. So trying to give them more of yourself is actually the opposite of what you need to do. It's like if someone says, I've had enough cake. I'm full. I'm nauseous. I don't want any more. And you say, you just need to have another bite. It's so good. Try it. They already have. At the moment, the best thing to do is wait to stop, to back off. Number two, what motivates your ex to come back to you? It's going to be what motivates us in basically every area of life. And that's how much we value something and the risk of losing it. Why do people get out of bed in the morning and go to jobs that they hate? It's to keep from losing things that are valuable to them. Why do athletes or people who own businesses work so hard around the clock often without seeing success immediately? It's because they value something and they want it and they don't want to lose what they've gained. And so when it comes to your ex, what this is about is how much they value you and the relationship with you that they had and if they feel that it's in danger of being lost. And you may say, well, they broke up with me, so the relationship with me is not very valuable to them. And that's correct in this moment. We already know that. In this moment, their heart is not where we want it to be, but that's where scarcity comes into play. And that's simply being that it's one thing to not appreciate something and to not value it when you have it and it's easily accessible. You've probably heard the expression, air is not important until you don't have it. The same can be true of you. Sure, when they know you want them, they know you love them, they know they could have you at any second. And it's easy to just live life knowing that because there's no consequences, at least to their potential relationship with you or not. They can take it or leave it because they know it's given with you. They dumped you, so they were in control. I talk about this in other videos. But basically the idea is you were the one who experienced loss because they took it away from you. But for them, they didn't experience loss at the breakup because they were in control. They called the shots. You were the one who did not get what you wanted. So you experienced the loss. They're in control. So that's the dynamic we have and that's the problem. And so in order for it to work, your ex has to feel 
loss, the potential that they could lose you. And again, you're asking, well, why do they care? Well, they don't at the moment, but if you don't push and you don't contact constantly, try to talk them into it, try to show them how much you love them and just get on their nerves. If you just leave them alone, then they actually will go through a stage of relief because they got the breakup over with. It was awkward. It was difficult. They didn't want to go through with it really, but they wanted the outcome. They wanted to be away. They wanted to be free of you. And I know that's difficult to hear, but that's hopefully temporary, but that's what happened. And so they go into this stage that I call relief, where they're just relieved that the breakup is over with. It was difficult, but there's better things coming to me. That's what they think. And so then, if and when you finally start to stay away from them, because usually at first, most people who find my videos have already been broken up with and they've already reacted. They've already begged and pleaded and all that. And sometimes they think, oh, I've just messed it up completely. That's not necessarily true. As a matter of fact, usually that's not true. It doesn't mean that it's 100% going to happen that you're gonna get back together with them, but just because you begged and pleaded does not mean that you permanently ruined it. It's never too late to do the right thing. So staying away from them can allow them to go into the first stage after relief, which would be the second stage and it's curiosity. And it's basically just the idea, why aren't you pursuing me? Why aren't you chasing me? Because it would make sense to them that you would because they broke up with you, which Really, even though this is not popular to say, and they would probably deny it because it could make them look bad, but the person who breaks up with another person sees themselves as above them in value, or else they wouldn't be breaking up with them. There's a little bit of that, even if they don't put it into words and they don't necessarily think that, the idea is, I'm breaking up with you, but you wanna be with me. So you see where the value structure will go from that. And so with that structure, it basically sets it up to where they don't have any consequences because they feel like they could still get you back if they ever change their mind and that they are free to just go forward without any consequences basically of the breakup because they assume they could get it back whenever they wanted it. But if that assumption goes away to where they start thinking that you're not acting like someone who's less attractive because someone who's less attractive would clearly see that they were losing someone more attractive and they would chase them down and beg and plead and pursue and fight and make this grandiose effort, which is sure to only elevate the person's level of attractiveness in their own mind even higher. And it really creates a further imbalance to where they wanna get further away. But if we are able to change that dynamic, which I'm gonna get into in the points that follow, that's where we can at least get them to take a look at this differently. Before I get to point number three, get some more information on my emergency breakup kit at myexbackcoach.com. I'll link to it in the description below. It's a powerful guide to help you get your ex back. That's the emergency breakup kit. Number three, how time factors in. Time helps in multiple ways. First of all, it shows them that the dynamic that they believed was true, that they were higher up on the attraction totem pole than you were because they're the ones who broke up with you and that they could permanently get you back so they don't ever have to worry about that if time is what helps to chip away at that. And here's how it does it. It does it in multiple ways. First of all, it allows them to observe that you can stay away from them, that you are strong enough to stay away, which again, does not compute. It does not match the idea that you're less attractive because a less attractive person would want the opportunity. A less attractive person would be out of their mind knowing that they lost this person. They're trying to get them back and they're pursuing and fighting and pleading and begging. But if you're not acting that way, well, then maybe you're not less attractive. Maybe I got this wrong. And sure, that's shallow. You don't want your ex to come back only because they all of a sudden change their mind about how attractive you are. That's not the end game. That's not the final product. That's just getting their attention to where they slow down. So it's like the analogy I use a lot. If you chase a squirrel or a bird or something outside, it will run away from you. But if you sit down, the thing might just hop over to you because there's no need for it to run. If your ex has no need to run further away from you emotionally, in other words, if you leave them alone instead of rubbing that wound raw or giving them more of something that they have already said they don't think they want anymore, if you stay away, at least your ex doesn't run further away from you because you're not pushing. And that's where it all starts. We just want them to actually take an honest look at this and not to feel these 
false emotional sensations that say that you're not as attractive as they are. And that's why they could get you back at any second and they don't have to worry about the consequences. But when they see that you can stay away from them, what primarily happens is that they actually realize that the consequences of the breakup will impact them, that they actually need to get this right. Second is, it's one thing if they feel the time pass by, but it's another thing when they pick up their phone and they look at it and they see it's been 47 days since you've contacted them. That awareness, that realization is important because it shows them something they probably didn't think could happen when they broke up with you. When they broke up with you, knowing that you wanted to be with them, if someone had asked them, they probably would say that you couldn't stay away. But at that moment, they actually probably didn't even care that much because they were under the false assumption that you were less attractive because they dismissed you. But as they start to realize that you can stay away and they take those next steps in their mind and realize you could actually go be with someone else, that someone else could find you attractive. Why? Because, well, they did early on in the relationship. It's almost like that's new information. It's like, wait a minute. And they have to go back in their emotions, in their heart, in their mind to the early days of your relationship when they found you attractive. And so that's when they can actually start to experience some of the loss because they see you're strong enough to stay away. They see that this much time has passed, which is kind of shocking when you do the math. And they start to reflect on the relationship and realize that you were attractive to them and that you will be attractive to other people. And now, finally, the breakup has consequences that they could lose you. So it's not that we're having to answer the question, well, why do they care? If they lose me, they're the ones who broke up with me, but they didn't lose you is the thing. They made the decision. They were in control. You're the one who lost because you didn't get to say so. But now all of a sudden they realize that they are in the position to lose something, to lose you. That flips the dynamics. And now for the first time, we actually get to know what they really feel, what they really think, because they have to experience the consequences of the breakup. And the third way that time helps is they know you are not going to stay celibate and single forever, that you want to be in a romantic relationship with someone who feels the same way, who you can have a future with. And so your ex knows that you're not going to permanently wait on them, but it takes them a little time to actually realize that because they're not thinking that specifically. They're basing it more on the drunkenness they feel in feeling that they are more attractive than you because they broke up with you. And that's just a basic thing, even though it's not fun to talk about. Number four, their attraction matters. We tend to think that if they only knew how attracted we were to them, how badly we wanted this, that they would have some sort of epiphany and they would want to be back together with us. But that's actually not how it works. And if you think about it, most of us have been in a situation where someone else wants to be with us. Someone else thinks they're in love with us and all that, but we don't feel the same. And just knowing that they love us, just knowing that they want to be with us is not enough to make us say, oh, well, then let's do this. It has to work both ways. We both have to feel like we are getting something or someone very valuable, something that we want, a relationship with someone that we want. Don't deny it. That's just human nature. They have to be attractive in our eyes, physically, and they have to be attractive emotionally and intellectually, at least to satisfactory levels, whatever those are. And if that's not there, and again, I'm talking about it's just to satisfactory levels. There is a point where everyone would say, that's not enough. I want more than that. And so what really matters here is the attraction that your ex feels or that they don't feel. It's not about how badly you want it. It's about how badly they want it. As I've said before, it's not a contest of who loves this person the most. It's a contest of who they want to be with and they care about and they're attracted to and they love the most because that's who they are going to want to be with. And so once someone understands that, it's usually easier to get them to stop pursuing and begging and pleading and just thinking they're going to have a little talk with them and tell them how they feel, which a lot of people will ask me, should I tell them how I feel? Well, it really doesn't matter how you feel. It matters how they feel. And that's kind of an eye opener to a lot of people. But keep that in mind that staying away from them is because how they feel in the moment, they would not be receptive 
of you. Just like if someone's had too much cake, like I mentioned earlier, they've had too much food and you're like, oh no, you don't understand. It tastes so good. Just try it. Just taste it. Why won't you taste it? It's delicious. And they say, I'm full. I don't want any more. And so you have to wait until they're hungry for you again. And that can take some time. Before I get to point five, take a quick second and subscribe to this channel so you can be notified when I have more videos like this. So just click that button, subscribe, and let's get on to number five. Number five, your questioning is important. And what I mean by that, and be sure to listen to the end of this because I'm going to wrap up a few things here. People ask me all the time, what should I be doing right now while I'm in no contact? I'm grieving the relationship, but I'm also somewhat hopeful and I'm not going to just try to hop back out there. I'm going to give myself enough time and I'm going to give my ex enough time just to make sure that this thing is really over, but hopefully to be able to get back together with them. What should I do in the meantime? Well, I do suggest a lot of things like spending time with friends, reaching out and catching up, maybe even rebuilding some of those friendships. That's a great thing to do. Being busy with hobbies, working on your fitness, working on your health, losing that extra weight. Those kinds of things are great when you focus on yourself and you become actually better than you were. It sure does make for a great meeting when you actually sit down with your ex because they've reached out to you and they want to have coffee or they want to have lunch to talk and they see you and physically you look more attractive emotionally. You're stronger. You're more attractive. You're actually increasing your odds a little bit by working on yourself and focusing on these things and watching my videos. A lot of people will say that they watch them every night to try to help them sleep. They just want to remind themselves that they have hope that they have a plan that it's not the end of the road and it's not the end of the world. That's helpful as well. But one thing I really hope you're doing, and I suggest that you do it if you're not, is that you question if you want this person back. And I bet a lot of you are like, Oh, I don't want to do that, but wait, stick with me on this. It's good for you. It's good for the relationship in the future. If you get back together with them and it really can help you to learn what matters to you most in relationships, because if you can go through and make a list of things that you didn't like about the relationship you had with them, and this is things they did, things they said, maybe that were hurtful, or maybe they weren't considerate. They didn't think of you. Maybe you were the one who was giving all the compliments and they rarely complimented you, or you were the one who gave gifts of affection and they didn't give as many to you, or you were always the one who initiated things physically and they didn't. And so you felt unwanted and wondered if they desired you as much as you desire them. There are things about the relationship that weren't perfect. And if you are honest with yourself, you will admit that. And it's good to think about those things. It will help you as far as just feeling so desperate to get back together with them. Sometimes it can help with that, but also it can prevent you from putting this person on a pedestal and making them perfect, which makes the whole process more difficult for you. So remember, they're not perfect. They're a flawed human being. They are not majestic. They are not royalty, but they are someone who's not sure that they want to be with you which actually for some people, when they really realize that it's a deal breaker. And I'm not saying that it has to be with you, but these are things that you should be thinking about. So instead of just spending most of your time thinking, I hope they come back. What can I do? Why have they not come back to me? Be asking yourself if you want them back. And at first it may be a silly question. You may say, well, of course I do. But the more that you get into it, it can actually help you not put them on a pedestal, which can be good because when you interact with them, you don't want to treat them like they are above you. You want to be kind. You want to be considerate, but ideally this would be an equal match where both of you are pursuing each other. Both of you desire each other. Both of you want to be with each other and it's not out of balance. And so that can really help with that. And it can also help you to be more attractive because if you feel like you're on equal footing with them, as far as attraction goes, you're going to do a lot of things that don't weaken your position. And I hate to speak as though this is strategic, but sometimes it can be a little bit because we teach people how to treat us just like in this breakup. If you don't chase them down, you don't fight for them and all those things, then you're actually teaching them a great lesson, a valuable lesson for you. It's valuable that they know it because it's going to be good for you. And that is that they can't use a breakup to manipulate you in the future. They can't say, well, I didn't like that. He didn't help me enough with this. So I'm going to break up with them. Or I didn't like that. She did this. So I'm going to break up with her. A breakup should be very serious. It should be when all other options have been exhausted and you've worked at it. And if they just do it too quickly, if it's just too simple, just easy for them 
to give away the relationship, first of all, maybe that should be a deal breaker. But second of all, you definitely don't want them to think that they can break up with you and that you'll do all the work and you'll come running and build that ego up of theirs and validate them and show them how attractive they are and how much you want them. Don't reward them for breaking up with you. Don't make it something where in the future, assuming you two go back together, if they want attention from you, they can break up with you. If they want to feel somebody fight for them, they can break up with you. Don't make the breakup a way that they can get a certain action from you. If anything, teach them it will result in your total disappearance. Here at the end screen, there's a really important video called, Should I Be Myself to Get My Ex Back? A lot of people say that. And this video is not what you think. It's actually a different video of mine in terms of how I present some of this content. So I encourage you to take a look. You can click on it here in the thumbnail at the end of this video. Thank you for subscribing. This has been Coach Lee. And as always, thank you for watching.